Hello everyone, Antiprime here. Welcome to the tutorial for the alpha of the auto build mod. The mod is not complete yet, but I'm going to be updating it with new features and bug fixes every month. And feel free to contact me and let me know if you have any requests as well. But for today I'll be showing you the basics of how to use the features it does have. And in the background you can see some examples of something I made with the mod. All this was decorated in one click. Of course, I had to make the whole decoration template myself. But yeah, let's get right into the first example. So let's say you just got the mod and you're in the empty editor. What do you do? Well, first, you'll want to find this show button to show the buttons for the mod. Then go in the menu, click the plus to add a new template, and choose your algorithm. Right now, there's only two options. So first, we'll get into the puzzle tiler algorithm. And then you can click these three dots and rename it if you wish. And then if you want to create the base, you can click this place base button, which will place the empty, undecorated version of the template for you. You don't have to do it through that button, but it makes it easier. So the main part of the puzzle tiler algorithm are these pieces. You don't have to use these. You can delete these if you want and create your own. Um, you can create as many as you want. They don't have to be right here. You can put them anywhere. And if you want pieces to be facing other directions, you'll have to copy them and rotate them yourself just to give you more control over what kind of pieces it'll place. You can include slopes if you want. You don't have to include 3D, but if you do want 3D, don't put it on these blocks. Put it over here on the 3D object so it can do it automatically for you. I guess you could leave these out and do it yourself, but I heavily recommend to do it this way. And then you can do your saws, your small blocks, your slopes, etc. Pretty self-explanatory. The main thing to note is you do have to use these blocks for the pieces, you have to use these spikes for the spikes, because the mod will look for these as markers for where your pieces are. You always want the markers to be on layer 0, and you always want your decoration to not be on layer 0. Anything that's not on layer 0 is considered decoration, so make sure you don't put your deco on layer 0. You can organize it however else you want among all the other layers though. Um, the main confusing part I need to explain are what are filler blocks and what are filler spikes? What are these filler slopes? Fillers are when the mod can't find a way to fit pieces perfectly to match the shape of your structure. There could be missing blocks. So what it does is it'll use any of these filler pieces that fit that empty spot and put them there. Same for these filler slopes. If you don't have a slope piece or it just doesn't happen to use a slope piece that fills in the slope of your structure, it will use one of the filler slopes. And then if there's a spike on a filler block, it'll use this style instead. So you could, if you wish, have a different style for your filler blocks like I did in the example I showed in the intro. So I'm going to quickly put in my basic decoration here on this template and get back to you to show you how to apply it and use the settings. All right, so I've gone ahead and put the decoration I've already created onto this template. You can see I've added quite a few pieces, including some slope ones, 3D saws, etc. You get the idea. And keep in mind that, you know, you want to think about the Z layers you're using for all these objects because the algorithm will automatically use the same groups, the same Z layers when you apply it. So keep that in mind for whatever Z layers you want to use in your level. And if you want to have like effects like I do where these little things can pulse, then you want to give them their own groups like I did and it'll copy those groups over. So how does it work? Once you've created your template, all you want to do is select all of it. When it's selected, Make sure you also select the template you want to save it to and simply click the set button and you'll see it says saved. And then now that it's saved, you can go into any level and keep in mind it is going to use the same color channels. So in your target level, you want to use, you know, whatever colors you want to use on the same channels and you'll create your layout however you want. Boom, 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 you know, add the small ones if you want. Um, click apply and you can see it does work which is great and you can see an example of a filler piece here it didn't happen to cover this with a normal piece so it used the filler piece and you can see a whole filler piece here that's great 
And my decoration template isn't perfect, but you know, I'll leave that up for you expert creators to figure out. And if we add a whole bunch of spikes here, we might, if we're lucky, yes we are, see an example of it using a filler spike on a filler piece. So you can see this was a spike here, and since it was a filler piece, it used the filler style spike instead, which you can see I put down here, filler style spikes. So what do the different settings do? Well, they're pretty self-explanatory. Let's say you have your level with uh, a moving platform for the player. Let's say this whole thing is some moving platform that goes down. You don't want the decoration to not move down with the platform. <clears throat> so what you do is, in your level, let's say you've given it a group, you know, 116, go into your menu, you want to make sure copy groups is on, which it is by default, and when you click apply, you'll see all the decoration also has that group, 116. Let's say that your layout has some special groups for some reason that you don't want copied over, then in the copy groups, you can type in the groups you want it to exclude like this with commas, and any of those groups are not gonna get copied. So you can see it only has 116, 117 is only on this layout, not the decoration. Uh, some other settings, you can see how it is um, creating this like multi-layered type of effect. Well, you can disable layers. If we disable both layers, it's only going to do one layer, which looks a bit empty, looks like this, and it has to use a lot of fillers. If you want to, you know, turn on the second layer, you can see it's using two layers, just like this. Um, there's some other settings. If we do turn on all the layers again, if we do force biggest, it will use the biggest piece it can find and then just go down there. So it's using these really big pieces, as you can see. And <clears throat> most important setting to keep in mind is this optimized one. If you don't use this, it's extremely wasteful. We can see that um, like all of these objects are not actually visible in the real design. So what you want to do almost always is keep this optimize on. This is the size of the optimization box. I'd probably leave it on default, but you can play around with it. And what it will do is you can see it's removing objects that are not visible. Very important for keeping your levels optimized. Uh, some other settings here. This is just the chance to use pieces that have slopes. If you're not sure what to do with this, just leave it on default. It's pretty good on default. Piece touching allows pieces to touch on the same layer, so I'll quickly demonstrate that. We can see that, I mean, it's kind of weird looking with my design because I didn't keep that in mind, but it is letting pieces on the same layer touch. So you probably want to create your template with that in mind if you're planning to use that setting. Um, these are groups that it can give to pieces on each layer. So for instance, if I want to have maybe pieces pulsing or something for a certain effect, we can see that these pieces are getting some of the groups that I've listed. Like this one got six, they could have gotten five. These are on layer two, so they're getting seven. So you can give the pieces their own groups, and they're different per layer. And if you don't want all the pieces to have groups, just change this chance, and not all of them will have groups. That basically explains all the settings. They're pretty easy once you've, you know, figured them out once. And you can get pretty creative with these. For instance, if you wanted to make a nine circle style design, you could simply create some pieces like this. And let's say you created the smaller layer, the smaller one, and then like let's say these were your pieces, you'd have to put the normal slope markers over it, of course. Then you could go in here, and if you do force biggest and piece touching, then it's gonna first do the biggest piece it can, then it's gonna place the second biggest, then the third biggest, and in effect you would get yourself a basic nine circle style effect. So that's just one example of how you can get creative with the settings. But I think that explains everything you need to know about this, so let's move on to the other algorithm, which is Wave Function Collapse. Alright, so if you want to make pixel art style, or you want to make a platformer, you probably want to go for this algorithm right here. WFC, it stands for Wave Function Collapse. You don't need to know what that means, all you need to know is this algorithm will analyze the decoration you give it, and then just use that info to apply it to the structures. Uh, instead of placing 
given structures like the other one, it will like analyze it on a block for block basics basis, basically. So we can see that the template is a lot smaller. What are we doing here? Well, as you can see, it just wants you to create as many pieces as you want. These two would be a good starting point. And then um, you'll just click set and it will learn from these examples more similarly to the built-in auto build in GD and apply them to the structures you give it. So I'm gonna create some examples now and then I'll get back to you. All right, so I've created some basic decoration for this example. Um, so once you have this, just like the other one, you can select all of it and click set and it will save it to this. And there aren't many settings yet, but I'll be adding more very soon. And then you can, you know, go to your layout create your structures, whatever, select ones you want to apply it to and click apply. And then what is this? It might say it failed to solve. Well, what does this mean? It means that you didn't give it enough examples for how to decorate this specific shape. So for instance, we can see we have two corner pieces next to each other here. Nowhere in any of my examples did I provide that. So <clears throat> if we now include this structure, which does have that, then we can simply select all of it again, click set, and now, theoretically, it should be able to figure out how to solve a piece like this, and it can. So very good. And if we create a very big piece, it should be able to just figure out how to do that on its own, and hopefully it might randomly create some of these inner variations that I have shown it. And it did. That's very nice. So we can see it's gone ahead and done that. So what I would recommend is if this algorithm isn't giving you what you want and or it's failing to solve for a specific piece, simply decorate that piece and reset your template, including that piece. And then it will always be able to know how to solve that. And eventually you'll get to the point where it can solve any type of piece that you normally do. So yeah, I think this one is quite easy to use once you figure it out. And that basically wraps up all the info you need to know for the alpha of this mod. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me in my email, uh, my Discord, etc., or just the YouTube comments. You can find this stuff in the description. And thank you for trying out my mod. And hopefully I'll be seeing you guys again soon with a big update to this mod and a new tutorial. Bye.